Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials Video 64. It's on work and energy. And a track event that gets at the relationship between energy and work is the pole vault. And the world record holder in the women's pole vault is Yelena Izinbayeva. And that record is 16 feet 7 inches. And so what does that mean? If I were to stand on a basketball rim, she'd be able to pole vault half a foot over my head, which is pretty crazy. I'm sure it feels amazing to get over that bar. But it's really a physics question. As she runs down the runway, she's increasing her kinetic energy. She's then storing that in the elastic potential energy of the pole, and then she's converting that into gravitational pot potential energy. And so that pole is doing work. It's applying a force over a given distance. And those are all going to be equivalent. The amount of energy she stores on the runway is going to be the amount of potential energy she has at the top. And so in a system, we can add or pull out mechanical energy, and that could be either be potential due to its position or kinetic energy but as we do that we have to move that system a certain amount of distance there has to be a displacement and that displacement is caused by an unequal parallel force in other words the parallel force has to be in the direction of that displacement and so since we have a force and a displacement what are we talking about here we now have work and work and that mechanical energy that's added are going to be equivalent and a nice tool that we can use in physics to look at how much work are we doing is to look at a force versus displacement graph. And so let's say we apply a constant force, a parallel force, and we get a certain displacement. All we do is look at the area under that curve and that's going to tell us how much work we've done and therefore how much mechanical energy we've added to that system. Now let's not say it's not straight. Let's say the amount of force varies over time. It's still going to be the amount of area underneath that curve. And since we're not using calculus in AP physics, we could just break this into all these different parts. We can figure out the amount of work and then the amount of energy that's been added to that system. And so let's give you an example of a problem. Let's say we have a bus that has a, a huge mass and we're applying a 12,000 newton force to it. And that newton force gets an acceleration since it's constant and it moves a displacement of 48 meters. So if we want to figure out how much work is done on that bus, work is going to be equal to the force, F, times s. s is going to be the displacement of the object. And so all we really need to know is what's that force and what's the displacement. And so if I plug in those two values right here, it's that 12,000 newton force times a 48 meter displacement. And so the amount of work that we've done is going to be around 580,000 joules as we solve this for correct significant digits. So we've done that much work on the bus. And so I'll put that right up here. Now work and energy are going to be equivalent. And so we've added energy to that system. We've added kinetic energy to that system. And so the amount of work is going to equal the amount of kinetic energy that we've added. And so how much kinetic energy did we have at the beginning? Well, the bus was at rest, so there was zero amount of kinetic energy. And we've done work on that bus, and we've converted it into all that kinetic energy that we have at the end. And so what makes this nice is once I know the amount of work, I could figure out the amount of kinetic energy. Assuming we didn't lose a lot to friction, I could therefore even figure out the velocity of that bus. So let's do that. The amount of works, which we calculated before, is equal to 1 half mv squared. Again, that's that final kinetic energy. We know the mass of the bus. So we we can just plug that in. It's 6,500 kilograms. And then we can simply solve for V. We can solve for that final velocity of the bus. So if I do that, I get a velocity of around 13 meters per second. And so it started at zero, ends up at 13 meters per second. So it's got around 30 miles an hour at the end. And so we're able to use this work energy theorem or this work energy relationship to figure out once we have work we can figure out the amount of mechanical energy that's been added. Now let's give you a similar problem. This is 12,000 newton force but let's say a giant is pulling this bus and it's at a 38 degree angle. And so how would you solve this one? Remember going back to that early concept map that force has to be parallel to the displacement. And so you'd have to use a little bit of trigonometry. So you'd set it up like this. So this is going to be our adjacent side. So this is the x value that we're looking for here. And so you're going to use the cosine of 38 equal to that x over that force. And then you'd figure out the force parallel to that movement. And that's going to tell you how much work is being done.
And so again, a really nice tool to get at this is a force versus displacement graph. And so what we have is force on the side and then displacement along the bottom. So let's say we have this object, a three kilogram block, and we're gonna apply the following forces to it. Let's say we apply a constant force to the right of 30 Newton force for the first four meters, and then we, we lessen that force down to zero over the next three meters. And so if I wanna calculate how much work is being done on that block, I'm gonna figure out the area under the curve. And so I would start with this area right here. So how much work is being done? Well, you just figure out the area of this, uh, this block right here. And so it's a force of 30 Newtons. What's our displacement? We'd read that across the bottom. It's gonna be four meters. And so the amount of work that we're doing is going to be 128 joules. It's just base times height. And so that's how much energy that block would have at the end. What kind of energy is it going to be? It's gonna be kinetic energy. Now watch what happens after that. We're lessening the force down to zero. And so how do I figure out the area there? Well, that's simply a triangle. And so I could figure out what my base is. It's gonna be three meters. What's the force? Well, if we say this is a rectangle, it's one half base times height, it'd still be 30 on this side times a displacement of three, so that'd be 90 joules. But since we're one half base times height, I'm gonna get 45 joules. And so you can always calculate the area under a force displacement graph that's gonna tell you not only the amount of work that's been done, but the amount of energy that's been added to that system. And so did you learn to make predictions about changes in mechanical energy? Again, we have to, make sure that that force is a parallel force to displacement. And then finally, could you apply the concepts of conservation of energy, we're not losing energy, and this whole idea of work energy theorem to figure out, for example, the velocity of that bus at the end? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.